The following is a Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show YouTube exclusive. Hey everyone, welcome to this special YouTube exclusive episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. When nostalgia comes alive, thank you for joining. Happy to be here with us. As always, I'm your host, Jake Jeff and Bobby T. As always, our co host, Chris Pixby and Matt Bingo. How are you guys doing? Doing, doing good. good. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? How are you, Jake? I'm doing great, Matt. Thank you for asking. Chris, yes. what do we have for today? Yes, happy uh, you're here with us, folks. Today's interview focuses around the play Annika's Elephants, which uses a mixture of music, puppets, and humor to tell its story. And to talk about this production, we have um, some guests joining us to talk about how Annika's Elephants came about, and both of them are returning guests. The first returning guest is a puppeteer and puppet designer and created and designed the sets, puppets, and costumes for Annika's Elephants. Please welcome back to the show, Martin P. Robinson. Hey, everybody. <laughs> yes. And the final returning guest is a writer primarily for children's TV and theater. For Annika's Elephants, she wrote the play and is also co-producing it, and she's also Marty's wife. Please welcome back Annie Evans. Hi, everyone. I'm also her husband. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, so um, to start this off, so for those who didn't see our uh, first interview with you both, could you tell our audience a bit about yourselves and what you do? You're, you're, you're the lady. Ladies first. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I am uh, uh, started out my life as a playwright. Uh, actually, I started out my life as a, as a hoofer, uh, singing and dancing, but then I quickly moved into writing when I got to New York City and was a playwright for a long time. I wrote some screenplays that never got made. And um, and then I met Martin P. Robinson at a puppet event and I was broke and I needed money. So I said, how do I get on Sesame Street? And he said, send me some scripts. And and I'm just old enough, this will date me, uh, to have not watched the show as a child. I had older brothers, uh, so we were watching Speed Racer and uh, mm. uh, all those kinds of shows. And uh, so I watched the show for a couple months and really learned the characters and I did some scripts and gave them to uh, Marty who gave them to Norman Stiles. And uh, a year later, I was hired. And so I, and I run on the show for 23 years uh, and traveled around the world teaching with the show. Uh, and then now this is sort of my journey back to my roots of theater, because I did theater in New York for 10 years before I even thought about doing anything for children. I never wrote a thing for children until I met him. <laughs> and so, uh, so it, but, but what's kind of nice is I'm combining now and I'm very interested you know, to moving forward in my career uh, doing family theater, which is, um, you know, it's challenging and it's wonderful and it's important to uh, to get to specifically uh, audiences that won't necessarily have the, the dough to go to theater, but um, often family theater is sponsored. And so like when we did the show in Tryon, North Carolina this summer, uh, the tickets were $5. So we were able to get a lot of people in who maybe wouldn't necessarily be able to go in other circumstances to the, to see a, a play. So that is kind of where I am right now. Nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, uh, who are you? What, uh, you want, you want, how far back do you want to go? <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the hour and a half version or the three, three minute version. <laughs> I think the three minute version. Three minute version. Because we do have let's to pick up our with, kids. And, and we want people to listen version. to this, you know. So. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm from Wisconsin. I started out as a small child. Um, I came to New York to study acting. Uh, uh, I found that uh, acting, uh, here, here was the big surprise with acting. I, I had to like use my own body and be myself and, you know, be this six foot to you know, affable kid from Wisconsin, which I was not interested in doing. So I uh, uh, stumbled into puppetry, and then when I saw that, I said, "Oh my goodness, I can I can be anything now: um, animals, vegetables, minerals. I played them all." Uh, so I became a puppeteer uh, and uh, studied with a lot of other puppet companies, and then became a uh, uh, you know a designer and builder of puppets. I, I always uh, was interested in art. And, and building things and drawing. So uh, designing, uh, my favorite thing to do is to uh, design, build, and then perform uh, the thing that I've designed and built. Uh, Which he's not doing in Annika's Elephants. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not performing in Annika's. I, 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 took a, I, I took a step back with that because I really wanted to approach it as a 
collaborator uh, from the design point of view. Uh, when I when I go into my performer mode, it's a different head, and I kind of get obsessive about it. Uh, and I didn't want to bring uh, to invite that obsessive person into this uh, <laughs> into this uh, group. So uh, so I was able to just kind of look at the designs dispassionately. I mean, from a designer's point of view, um, you know, not necessarily something that I had to work. Uh, that being said, I, I design and build all my puppets uh, with the specific idea that they're going to be worked by human beings with human hands, you know, in human positions. So I'm uh, I'm very kind to my performers. Uh, with regards to how things are designed and how they work. Absolutely. So, so since you both were our previous guests, what's it like to be back in the show to talk about what we're going to chat about today? It's nice. Nice to see you guys. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, where we're like, oh, you know, like, uh, like old, old returning families. Like, hey, these guys. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. And we've been talking to a lot of our friends too, so it's a kind of an old home thing, you know. Right. And, you know, and we've got this, uh, I mean, we, you know, I mean, Annie, I do doing our, our different things and we've got to have our family. I think we have, we have children in common that we, uh, we, have that that we too. deal with sometimes. Yeah. And what, some what people who, a lot of people who are involved in the show have been your interviewers. You've interviewed Bradley, right? Bradley yes. Mm -hmm. yes, we have had Bradley on. Yes. Yes. And yeah. Stephanie. Marcella? Yes. We've had yeah. him yeah, on Stephanie. Yeah. We've had Stephanie, uh, Stephanie on. we've had on too. Yeah. Jean Marie Kevens, she's a mover and shaker in the puppet business. We yeah, haven't had her on, no. Jean Marie, Marie, Lux, okay. Oh, okay, then you should look her up. Yeah, she, yeah. Uh, she does a whole, uh, you know, um, puppet training online stuff that you'd probably be very interested in. She has a, a group yeah. called the Little Shadow Productions. Yeah, we can talk about that. So oh. yeah, but uh, but just put her on her, right. put her on your list. She's a very good. Uh, she she has her finger on the pulse of what's happening. Whenever I say, "Oh, did you talk to so and so?" Oh yeah, I've been talking to them already. Oh, I just talked to them. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> she knows right, yeah. everything yeah. that's happening in the yeah. world of puppetry. She's one of the, she's the co-artistic director with Pam Arciero for the uh, uh, <clears throat> National Puppetry Conference at the O'Neill. Very nice. So moving into Annie Castell, and so we'll start with Annie here. You wrote this production and co-produced it. I'm curious what went into writing and creating this production. Uh, well, I have always really loved elephants. A uh, long, long time. I've always had, you know, you can see around my house, there's elephants everywhere. Uh, and I went when I was about in my mid thirties and I was um, uh, not married with kids. Uh, I would take my, my hiatus time from Sesame Street and go do some kind of a humanitarian thing. And so one time I went to Africa, to Kenya, and worked for a month with uh, a place, the thing is called Earth Watch, which is a huge organization. And they send lay people like ourselves and they match us up with our interests in, in, the, in the ecological world with you know, and scientists who are doing different studies. So I went and studied elephants in uh, between the uh, Savo East and Savo West uh, game parks in Kenya. And uh, it was a, an astonishing experience too, because we were out in Land Rovers every day, following elephants, being charged by elephants, I have pictures of me, you know, uh, you know, watching these uh, like seventy elephants around these big water tanks. Uh, it was incredible. Oh wow! I uh, learned a tremendous amount about elephants because that was part of the job. Uh, and then I came back and I was like, oh god, I would love to write about them. I didn't know, you know, how, you know, how would I do that? And so, like, literally, fast forward like fifteen years. And uh, and I always sort of thought things, and then I was um, about, oh, this could work, this could work. But then I was in a yoga class, and I was meditating, and I suddenly saw this little girl and a little baby elephant, and they were both orphans, and they became a family together, and they were oh. living out in the bush. And that just sort of came to me in a like a J.K. Rowling wash, the same way Harry Potter, had. not nearly as much money involved though, uh, and um, <laughs> yet, yes, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, and then I didn't think about it again. I was like, well, that's a great idea. But then COVID hit and suddenly we're stuck here. And I said, okay, I have all this time at home. Let me try to write this up. And so I wrote up a draft and I gave it to Marty and I gave it to Pam and I gave it to my uh, very close friend of mine, who's a, a book editor. And I got some notes and I wrote it again, uh, went through it again. And then um, I said, let's make a workshop and see how this works. So uh, a year ago last summer, so that was August of 2022. 
uh, we did a workshop of it up in uh, Ridgefield, Connecticut at this theater barn. It's, it was just a perfect place to do it. And it's also has been very convenient because it is set in Africa. So we wanted the um, majority of the cast to be uh, African-American. And um, Marty has been working very extensively at Sesame Street with new puppeteers who are of uh, of color uh, of any. Oh, yes. Uh, and, mm -hmm. um, and so we had this incredible cast of people that I could say, hey, would you want to be in my play? Do you want to be in my play? And so we, we just pulled all they these. All, they all said, yeah. They all said, yeah. So we pulled all these people that had been training with Marty from Sesame Street to be in the show. And it just worked out fantastic. Um, and Marty designed it. And so, so when we started working in the workshop, that's when Marty, I said, OK, how are you going to do these designs? So you started working on the puppet design probably spring of 22. Okay. Yeah, because Pam said yes. Pam was going to direct it, and then we got the theater, and then we spent most of June, July building puppets. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, and so, do you want to pause me, and then you talk about your design ideas? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm thinking back. Uh, you know, at, at some point I, in the process, you know, I, I, I really hit on. The, I, I really didn't want to build an entire herd of elephants. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, and I, I knew I, I didn't write it. There would be a herd of elephants because I knew you wrote a herd of elephants. I did have a herd of elephants. Right. But herd of elephants <laughs> enters a right. Attacks. First attacks, draft that was <laughs> attacks the poachers. You know, you know the, the herd of elephants exits. All of it. You know, I was like, I didn't think right, like like any writer. You know, let's uh, let's just dream big and let the let the let the poor sod designer figure it out. Um. Oh, I mean, I mean, it's 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 it's, it's kind of interesting and pivotal being the uh, puppeteer inside Snuffleupagus, who is a you know a form in, of it. A form. You know, he's a pachyderm, definitely, uh, and you know, and and I know exactly exactly what goes into working that character, and it's uh, you know, and I love him, but I would certainly wouldn't want to recreate anything like that. Uh, I'd right. also, you know, seen you know other elephants done. There's there's a really nice elephant in uh, uh, vanishing elephant. No, no, no. In in the uh, Broadway, uh, 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 Lion King. The Lion King, yeah. Lion King yeah. has a has a nice elephant that you know just kind of enters and exits. Um, didn't want to build anything like that. Uh, so, you know, part of the challenge is all right. I want to stay really true to the writing and to the essence and and what are the essence of of these elephant characters and then as soon as you you know hit on the word essence it's like okay what is it about elephants that makes them elephanty and specific and, and instantly recognizable uh and you you know you you know puppets are best in my opinion when they're highly stylized when they're when they're uh you know when they when they play with with uh, with shapes shape and design and aren't uh, trying to recreate nature. I mean, nature does nature very very well, and the closer you try to recreate it, the you know basically the worse it gets. Uh, so I wanted to have something uh, very much in the uh, in the highly stylized world. Abstract. Yeah. So I uh, so I started doing uh, line drawings, and I was uh, I was uh, first kind of inspired by the line drawings of Picasso. Uh, mm. Some of Picasso's uh, uh, bulls, he was you know, fascinated by bulls. And he did a uh, very well-known uh, drawing of a bull with a flashlight and a time-lapse uh, time camera. So he, he just drew a, a, this, 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 this drawing of a bull with light you know, in the air and it's just beautiful. And I loved the way the things moved and the way it all worked together. It was all one line. And uh, that was my starting point with it, was uh, what is the essence? What, uh, what's the simplest I can make this? Uh, so I started experimenting with, uh, with rattan, which is, funnily enough, uh, the inside of Snuffleupagus is made from rattan. All of his structure is uh, is rattan. So, being on the inside, you know, I, I, this hit me, you know, not that long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being on the inside of Snuffy all those years, I see the, you know, the rattan shapes, and they're beautiful. 
Uh, and there, there, were, there were a couple of times, you know, when I first got in, I said, oh, these shapes are so nice. They're so organic and there's such a beautiful flow to them. That's too bad that we, you know, that it's all covered up with, uh, with all this fur. Uh, so I was kind of inspired by the inside of that too, all this beautiful structure that you never see. Uh, puppet builders are very often um, obsessed with you know, making this structure and then covering it over with fur and feathers and you know all this stuff that uh, you know to make it look uh, more real and I think we really kind of miss an opportunity uh, and so I, I grabbed that opportunity to make them uh, very sketchy very simple uh, very much line drawings and so uh, the the rattan was perfect for that. So they're all made out of natural materials. That's the the mm. other kind of uh, challenge that I made myself was that uh, you know it was a natural show. It was gritty. It was taking place in the bush in Africa. Uh, you know, not you know there, there was no 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 pavement anywhere. Uh, mm. So let's uh, let's get uh, let's get gritty with these. Mm. So I you know when when I would tie knots, I would leave the knot exposed. Uh, I used twine everywhere. I used, uh, you know, when I tied a knot, I, I didn't trim it. I left the, uh, uh, the ends there as, as, uh, as part of the, part of the process. Definitely. I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious. So in terms of like, you know, all the other puppeteers and, you know, casting, like, how was that? How did that come about? Like, how was everyone kind of assembled? Um, uh, I, I, as I had said, we sort of, the workshop, because there was very, it's always very little money when it comes to theater, we had very little to offer, you know, in terms of pay, and we knew that our friends would want to be part of it, and we knew we would keep it to a limited time, so uh, we basically just went to people we know and trusted that we knew could work fast, and so we, you know, Jamika Collins, who plays our lead, you know, I gave her the script and I said, what do you think? And she comes out of theater. She was, uh, uh, got her, um, her BFA from NYU in experimental theater, which is, you know, very much kind of, up, you know, the alley of what we were doing. And she jumped on right away. And then, you know, we asked Bradley and uh, I didn't know Tori uh, Alexander, but Marty did. And so we, mm -hmm. Pam asked her uh, and then Jean Marie, um, who loves elephants as well. And we knew we needed someone else who has a producer energy uh, and who could help us with that because she produces a lot. So we, we uh, went to her and then Marty said, Layla uh, Gaznavi, mm -hmm. who uh, is now doing the Sesame training program for, um, but at that time she wasn't, but but we know her very well. So we literally just kind of went, okay. And then it was up to Pam really to go through the script and Marty together to figure out, you know, how many puppeteers do we really need? Uh, and so we originally had Jamika and six, uh, and then we lost somebody. Yeah, or kind, yeah. Of, kind of at the last minute. At the last minute, somebody, and then we yeah, somebody, and somebody pulled off the show. Pulled the show, and then we had someone who was a good friend of ours who was helping Marty build. She did a lot of the um, uh, sort of small, like we have little like antelopes and things that are just made out of just this horns, and there was this big lion head that she made. And she was going to work backstage, but suddenly we went, can you come on and just be your right hand for this? Oh, and can you come on and be your right hand for this? And before we knew it, she was, you know, and she's not a puppeteer. So there's some, a couple of things that she was like, I can't do this. And, you know, it's just, just too much, you know, but she, she jumped in both, you know, yeah, she was great. both feet and, uh, and, and did uh, all the shows up until um, we went to Atlanta. Uh, uh, and then Atlanta took, had a lot of puppeteers that they, we needed to use down there. Cause it's part of the, the deal was to use their puppeteers. Um, but the original, original cast uh, is still mostly with us. Um, but that's sort of how it happened, really sort of very um, uh, working as a family together. And then everyone literally lived in our houses because Pam lives up here with us. So we put up, you know, half the cast here and half the cast at her house. And then we would have food brought in and catered. Uh, so oh, it was nice. a really very organic uh, thing. So that's sort of how it started. Uh, and it went really, really well. We didn't even charge to, to um, I had a grant from from Henson, that, which really helped us uh, to get sort of it going. Um, and uh, that, that got spent very quickly. But um, uh, so that, that's how we kind of were able to say, we have a Henson grant, we're gonna do this. 
um, and then um, the word spread really fast after it was over. Suddenly we were getting. Well, when did when did Mary Rose get uh, she, get wind she, of it? It's in September, like this, the month she, after. But she, she, she didn't see she it. She never saw it. No, she, she heard, heard about it through heard Henson. About it. Yeah, heard about it through Henson, and we sent her the script. Yeah. Uh, this is the woman who uh, is the artistic producer of New Victory. Uh, but then I have a good friend who we knew, uh, and they so we started to have conversations with New Victory to break, which we're bringing it in 2024. But before that, we had, um, and then we sent it down to the Center for Puppetry Arts. And Pam and Jean Marie really wanted to go to the Puppet uh, PFA Festival with it. And then I have a friend who ha who is part of a, a very lovely, amazing theater in Tryon, North Carolina. And uh, we knew we needed to bring it back, bring it bigger, uh, and um, and you know, get it. We got another Henson grant, so we went to the middle of nowhere, North Carolina. Yeah, I mean, and, we, we all kind of thought, oh, you know, oh, please, you know, up, up in the mountains of North Carolina, yeah. trying North Carolina, really, how we really have to do this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it turned out the theater was stunning and yeah. beautifully equipped, and yeah. the people there were incredible. And it was, and so even though it, it had just been literally just kind of an experimental workshop production yeah. before that, we went into this theater with all these great folks and great designers. And yeah, we uh, got a great designer from Atlanta to come up because we were going to lighting, lighting, lighting designer. designer so we knew we were going down to uh, the Center for Puppetry Arts. So we got him from Atlanta. And again, we were supposed specifically looking for people of color to be part of the, you know, making a real multicultural um, community that's part of it. Right. And uh, and Tryon is a is a sort of um, retirement community. So there was a lot of people who had some dough uh, and beautiful homes, and they were just dying to have us all stay in their houses. People, because as uh, as Andre, our lighting designer, said, that was a magical thing. We will never create that again. So let's let that go because it was just you know we'll never have it's, it's it's never uh, yeah. never that perfect. It's never that perfect ever <laughs> again. So that was our little gem. But that kind of got us then leaping forward. It was it was know. a really good start for the show yeah and they had uh the i mean like the town has like three thousand people and 1500 people came so like half the town came to see this thing yeah you know, uh, great mix of the yeah. audience uh yeah. young, old, young old yes uh, almost too young uh but but they <laughs> we really got a sense of the reaction yeah. uh the the audiences went nuts yeah standing ovations every night and yeah. but, but we were like next to a little kid who was like three and he was like why don't they have any skin? You know, <laughs> and, but but we learned from that 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 kids will fill in the blanks. You know, it's like they they knew they were elephants even though they didn't have skin, and they very quickly knew. Mm -hmm. Also, some of the like the elephant her that I Morty didn't build, but there's like there's still about eight elephants, uh, and all you know that are, but some of them are just trunks. You know what I mean? So you've got like a couple of trunks, you've got a couple of heads, uh, you have no full body big elephant, only full body little ones. Uh, but they they totally got it. Um, yeah. We also learned that um, we needed to, that we had to put a limit on the age group because it is there's a couple scary things. So we had to make we limit now to right now we have six or seven and older depending on, you know, if you're an urban kid from New York or you're you know a very you know sheltered kid from you know Atlanta. Um, so uh, it, it was amazing. So then we went to P of A, which was. And then we ended up in Atlanta, uh, and that's where we are now with the show. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, fairly fairly early on, uh, we had the interest from uh, the New Victory Theater, yeah. uh, on, which is literally on Broadway, Broadway and Forty Second Street in New York City. Um, it's a it's a it's known for you know big family shows. It's a it's uh and they've got a you know very decent operating budget and uh mary rose who uh she came and saw it who, in who curates it came down to cry on uh, mm -hmm. trying mm -hmm. and uh and was was very moved by the show so which has been one of the reasons why it's been easy to keep this great cast mm -hmm. also is because yeah you know, going, going to broadway <laughs> nobody wants to leave or why right <laughs> Yeah, well, once, once we start to try to do a tour, which is our goal for the fundraiser that we'll talk about later, uh, is that um, uh, not everybody will be able to travel with it. If you're, you know, if you're if you're shooting your season of Sesame Street, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to travel with it. So one of the great things about Atlanta, also, we started to open up and we got uh, two more people who um, could join the cast either on a tour uh, or if, or as an understudy. 
uh, to just try to keep opening up and getting more people sort of, it's like, oh, can you do this if we, you know, in Texas, if that, if that comes to, to part, you know, there's a, a theater in Texas that Bradley's talking to. And, but we, uh, you know, and, you know we, we replaced key people, including uh, Jamaica for a couple of performances. Yes, so we had an understudy for Jamaica. And she big. stepped in and uh, was just yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. Everyone loved her. So it is. So we've been learning about that too, that we can take it beyond our original cast. Which, yeah, which in the lesson, the lesson for me is that, you know, the play works, the play works, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, with, with, with uh, changes in cast. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's really awesome about where, you know, contributions that Pam is doing for the production, not just, you know, co-producing, oh, but yeah. also directing and oh, choreographing yeah. the production yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, no, she's totally, uh, you know, I step back and Marty and she stepped forward, you know, in fact, I didn't go to the Atlanta production where we had to restage a lot. Again, because every theater you go to, you got to restage it uh, uh, in terms of what's backstage, what's on stage and, uh, and adding two new people. Uh, and we're going to add two new people again in New Victory. So we have already got our rehearsal space all set up because we're going to give ourselves four days to put in the two new cast members. Uh, and then, uh, and but I didn't go because I, I have my, the kids needed, we're starting high school. But also it's, you know, there's a point that's very important that for the playwright to step back and to let the cast take it and the director take it, the designers take it, uh, that it's, you know, that I don't have, you know, the investment uh, of me is already there in the words, uh, but they got to make it their own. So I thought it was really important for me. I just showed up opening night uh, and I stayed for a talk back and then I flew home because my kids were by themselves. <laughs> so, uh, and Marty, you, Marty flew back with me, but Marty went down for a week ahead, you know, yeah. and was there for the uh, beginning stuff uh, and, and setting it up because it's still, we, it's, there's a lot of puppets. And so they're still learning how to, uh, organize it and fix the puppets when they break because they will break um so yeah. uh, and, and as as designer uh not director it's uh it was uh you know i'm always kind of playing the game okay what you know what's my area as a as a designer uh and you know as kind of the you know the puppet coordinator to a certain extent you know and where does that uh overlap with uh with directing and you know and there's things that notes that i can give as a designer and as a you know puppet puppet coordinator, but then but then there's things I need to check with Pam as a, as a director, mm -hmm. or I just right. you know up to her step back and let her. So it's what's been fun mm -hmm. stepping back and you know and uh, uh, in that in that way as well. Yes. Now moving into the storyline of Annika's elephants, uh, it's the story of a young Kenyan girl who meets a baby elephant uh, as we kind of touched up on earlier um there's a lot that goes into the story but that's kind of a little bit of it for for you folks uh how important do you think this kind of a story is for the theater community uh for me i think it's a particularly important story for young people because uh the story has a lot of um things that they're related to relatable to them in terms of your emotions uh and uh, I mean, there's a real strong, strong love between the, the father and the uh, the daughter, uh, Annika and her papa, uh, but we lose him, you know, a third into the show. And uh, and so for kids to um, have something to watch and emulate uh, uh, and, and see that, you know, loss does happen and to see how she handles it. Uh, there's also another moment that a friend of mine who's a child psychologist said that's so important in the play where um, there's an uncle where when he dies, she's first supposed to go to before she runs off to the bush and the baby elephant follows her, um, uh, who is a little bit, uh, we call him creepy uncle. Uh, there's, there's nothing overtly sexual about it. We took, you know, there's nothing in there. It's just, she talks about, he's gonna just have her cook and clean for him and stuff, but it's uncomfortable and she feels very uncomfortable. And so she acts and she acts on, on her feelings and, and where as important, much she said for a, a child to see that it's okay to say, this isn't making me comfortable and I'm going to leave. And that's what she does in the play. So um, we've been very strong about, cause sometimes say, like, do we really need the creepy uncle to have that, you know, be that creepy? And, and, and Mrs. Mutembi actually pushes her yeah. to, to, to accept the social norm as well. Yeah, cause it's a social norm that, well, you're gonna go to your uncles cause he's your best of kin. Uh, Mrs. Mutembe is a sort of mother figure in it who runs the orphanage, elephant orphanage. 
and who's who she ends up being with uh, at the end of the show, and then she'll and she, you, you learn that she becomes her mama and stuff, um, because that's a social norm to say, oh well, you know, you just go and you just have to you know grin and bear it. But no, no, she she Annika said no, this is wrong. My dad would not like this, and so she uh, she she takes responsibility to say this is not right, and so. That's something that for little kids to see that, that it's okay to say those things. That's a really other important moment, I think, for the show. And then also about just protecting and the conservation uh, elements of the show. It's, it's a very strong conservation uh, theme and story about protecting elephants from poachers. The uh, the big antagonist is uh, sort of, you know, sort of, they're just hats and, you know, and, and, the, and the sticks to, to be guns, but the, the poachers who are, you know, um, they're running from you know and hiding from so there's a whole element about uh how do we save the elephants and how do we um protect them and uh because people want their teeth you know uh so that so the very last lines of the play is about protecting all the animals you know and that we share this world with so that's another reason i think it's a really important show for kids coming up who are much more aware than say maybe my generation was about um, saving the planet and being aware of the planet and, sh and sharing the planet. Absolutely. So as you mentioned earlier, you guys have taken this to a whole bunch of places, the National Puppetry Festival earlier in the summer, uh, Center for Puppetry Arts. Uh, there's a, it's gonna be at the new Victory Theater in New York next spring, uh, up in New York. But where would you guys like to take this? Ooh, well, I would like to take it to the new Victory Theater. That's really all. Uh, the uh, they're, 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 uh, G. Marian was uh, talking about taking it to Denmark. Yeah, well, there's Ooh, well, there's wow. uh, well, I mean, there's two sort of um, scenarios that we're looking into, um, and particularly, uh, you know, Jean Marie as a producer, because uh, she's that's you know she really does that a lot. Uh, is there's you know, it, it, again, since it's, you know, a multicultural show, uh, we really want to get it to, you know, like Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, Chicago, right, yeah. San Francisco, mm -hmm. to places where there is a community that wouldn't necessarily get to go see it. I mean, that's one thing that's great about the new Victory Theater is they half the half of the shows are school groups only yeah. from all around the tri-state area. They're all bussed in. And so they're going to mm -hmm. be really a very diverse you know, urban kids are going to come in and see theater and see stories and see people, you know, that are talking directly to them, like, you know, our play. And uh, so that's a wonderful thing. So we want to try to emulate that in other places, other cities. Uh, so that's one of the goals. Uh, and then also there's, you know, the international kind of community that Pam, particularly since she's the artistic director of, of um, National Puppetry Conference, she's gone to a lot of these sort of festivals in Europe and stuff. And, th and she would love to finally take something that she's directed. I mean, she's gone and seen things and brought people to the O'Neill and, but she's never brought one of hers. And so this is a great opportunity for that. So, so we're looking to do both uh, those things, you know, again, and it's not easy. So that is our main reason why we are hosting two different kinds of fundraisers in November, not for new victory. That's, that's all you know, taken care of. Uh, it's for what do we do after? Uh, and and how and we're you know we're neophytes in some ways so we're asking questions and we're asking people to help um, to how you know how's the best way to you know move this forward uh, but it always will need um, some capital yeah definitely yeah yeah I, I honestly think Denmark would be a very interesting place to perform that mm. oh yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah, but Annie's Annie's right. It, I mean, it, it it's very much a play that needs to be seen by the you know, by the community that it's serving mm -hmm. and families. You know, parents seeing with their kids so that they can. Uh, I mean, everywhere you go, when you do family theater, also you always have an educational component. So when we were down yeah. at the Center for Puppetry Arts, uh, there was a uh, they they had a build your own puppet. They we had a talkbacks. They had uh, several several groups go upstairs to you know discuss and have. You know, conversations about conservation. The New Victory has its own, you know, machine of educational, you know, things that that they are, you know, way ahead of, of designing and bringing people in. They're, they're, they have a huge mandate to uh, for for social outreach. For social outreach. So so they're doing that, and then we have, um, you know, we have handouts and flyers that we've created 
that you know even down to like just a fly that just is like you know a questionnaire for kids you know like one of those kind of silly thing you know like placemat things that they could take with them you know that has, you know that has mazes and those things you know just but with questions about elephants to it as takeaways to um to bring that you know to, uh, with them and see you know what did you learn from this show so that's um i, I think why I want to going forward, it kind of makes sense having done 27 years of Sesame Street to bring that into my theater is like, yeah, I just naturally say, okay, what's the educational component? You know, who's gonna be handling that? Who's handling it at, at this theater or that theater? Uh, Cause it is um, part and parcel to doing family theater. But but within the, but within the context of the play, it's, I mean, anything educational is all woven right into the plot. Yeah, there's yeah, nothing, a lot of education. There's the no, yeah overt yeah <laughs> you don't leave this play without knowing that you use elephant dung to uh, keep mosquitoes away you know yeah. you don't leave this play without knowing you know things like that yeah but it's, <laughs> but it's not uh okay here's the lesson no no yeah it's funny <laughs> i mean it's a lot of humor around things like that for kids to remember absolutely so for you annie so can you describe like any challenges or things you have to consider when creating a theater production for families? Oh, well, I mean, mostly it's to, it's about making sure, cause you know, you always don't want to talk down to kids or down to, you know, so like all things I've, I'm, it's true of Sesame Street too, when I was writing it, you know, just to not talk down to them, to make it exciting and make it have a plot that's, a, you know, that we had to make sure that, you know, from what do we understand, you know, watching that the kids never are, you know, bored. Uh, there's always something happening. There's always things going on on stage. There's always, tension you know to keep it moving and that's particularly true with kids uh because you know if they aren't engaged with what's going on on stage i mean uh, jamika who is the main character is constantly talking to them and bringing you know, you know and and you know making sure that they're there but they will just start you know they'll just start playing with their friends around there you know they're you know that, that so you, you it, your kid audience will tell you right away so that would say the biggest challenge is always paying attention to your who is your audience and you know how old are they and you know make sure that you keep them going like in the play there's that Jamika actually steps out of her main character of Annika and and plays for humor she plays a little kid uh watching the show just to like sort of say what are you talking about you know kind of thing and that's play as yeah uh hmm. that she does just to almost to just empathize with the audience watching it and so, and it works really surprisingly well cuz the kids get it they know that that what she's doing and that gets a lot of laughs. Uh, so, um, but that's that's I would say the biggest challenge is always. She's know. she's she's presented at the start as a storyteller. A storyteller, yeah. And and that, that I am your storyteller. And that she's yeah. there telling the story. Mm -hmm. So so it, it really that 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 format uh, you know opens it up for a uh, a lot of a lot of interesting uh, interesting writing mm -hmm. and performing. Right. So for fundraisers, can I talk about that? Yeah, that's good. Absolutely. Yeah. We're yes. having two yes. fundraisers. The first one is um, very special. That's a TV monitor uh, workshop. There's two parts to it. One is a sort of uh, live demo that is, uh, you know, for about an hour and a half, uh, where it, we've got Bradley uh, Friedman, uh, Stephanie de, de Brizzo, Pam, and Marty uh, talking about, you know, the, the sort of essence of television puppetry monitor work you know where it all comes and then people can do some uh some simple monitor work and then those who stay which of course is a larger fee are, are then doing a really intensive monitor work with the four of them and it's very limited there's only 20 spots and that will go then for the rest of the day uh including lunch so there's that and then uh right after that we're going to launch it you know sort of as that one is coming to an end we're doing a, an online auction that comes to a head on the uh, 18th of November, and we've we've gathered you know puppet swag from every person we know to uh, everything from uh, a house on Block Island is on auction down to you know Marty's original picture from you know from um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like a signed picture. So there's things of all different price ranges for people to uh, to bid on. And if you don't uh, want to bid on anything, we also have Annika's Elephants t-shirts for just a small donation. So we have, it's like a two-part thing that's uh, sort of an isolated at the carriage house uh, in New York City. Um, uh, uh, very, uh, Heather Hansen very love, uh, wonderfully gave us uh, the spot to do it in. And then the, uh, the other thing is online, completely online. So the people who are, we know in Bangladesh or India or they can also be part of, you know, this sort of, 
you know, push us to the next level uh, for Annika after we um, are done in New York. Nice. Can you? Uh, Marty, can there's Marty. Now you can see some. Can uh, you hear me? Yep. Yep. Yes, we do. All right. Yes, I'm can. here in the shop now. Uh, these are the uh, the baby elephants that uh, that interact uh, with uh, with Annika. Uh, you can see the rattan construction. Um, it's all it's all intersecting uh, whorls and lines. Uh, this there's two two versions of the uh, of the little baby. Um, this is. Uh, this is uh, when she's uh, when she when she first is brought in um, is very very weak and sickly. Um, I gave her uh, I gave her the uh, you know the the eye mechanism for lots of pathos in the eyes, um, and it, but it's all this uh, very sketchy uh, rattan uh, construction, um, and she goes from this version to this larger, more complete, more complex version. Uh, and then we've got, uh, let's see, we got, that's not part of it. We got, the, here's a large, large version of a, of a head. Um, so it's just a head. There's no head and ears and trunk. There's no uh, no other parts to this. Uh, there's a folded up version there. Uh, down here we have uh, the next the next one I'm building, which is going to be the largest one yet. Uh, and you can see the uh, the construction that I use for uh, for the rattan. It's uh, it's sideways. You can kind of see the uh, the geometry that I'm playing with. On the uh, on nice. the head, this one's going to be probably a quarter to a third again larger than any of the other heads I've made. Um, right here, we've got the uh, the graduated uh, uh, rings that are going to eventually be the trunk. And uh, actually, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to getting into that one today. While the weather is nice, I'm going to take that right out uh, right out the garage doors here. And out into my driveway, and uh, set up there with uh, a bunch of twine and some zip ties, and uh, and and start having some fun. Yes, yeah, so, you, oh, you want to show them uh, Mrs. Matembe? Isn't she right there? Uh, she doesn't look like much. Doesn't look like much right now. Yeah, we need a puppeteer for her. Um, all of the uh, human characters, just so you know, um, the Papa, uh, those wardens, the, and there's Mrs. Matembe. All of them are represented by just hats, you know, and she's a dress, she says a hat and a dress. The, pop, the papa's only gloves and, a, and hats. Uh, the, uh, the poachers are boots with a, um, a stick to be a, a gun. So, uh, so it's, again, even that is stylized where you're filling in and, and the kids really do it. They, they totally know it's a person, you know, they just fill in the blanks, which is I think also a wonderful thing for young people who are not necessarily seeing a lot of theater to, to use their imaginations, uh, that it's, you know, it's not, you know, watching a television show where it's, you know, all just given to you, yeah. they have to fill in the blanks and it, and it really works. It, when, when you have great puppeteers like, yeah. uh, Bradley Freeman Jr. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Leila Ghaznavi and, uh, and, uh, uh Latoria Alexander, mm -hmm. uh, who are really brilliant puppeteers, uh, you put, you know, give them a hat and a glove and that's, all they need to make the character uh, really complete. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when the dad dies, I mean, people get really sad. You know, it's just, yeah. uh, it's just, uh, it's very, it's also a very gentle death because, again, there's little kids and you know, no, six year olds, so it's very, very gentle. But uh, it happens, and everybody, you know, has, but, it's but very in the quiet. hands, in the hands of Bradley Freeman, it's, uh, it's, it's, Smoothie. it's brilliant. You know, you don't, you don't need, uh, it, you know, there's no lip sync. Uh, it's just, you know, mm -hmm. the, the hat moves in the time that you know that, that the speaking would happen but there's no no lip sync at all there's no no skin no flesh no clothing nothing a hat and a pair of gloves that's it mm -hmm. yes oh so, so that you know which which kind of harkens back to you know 
when I was thinking about what the, what the essence of a character is and, you know, and it, in its, in its heart of hearts, it's written as a, as a memory play. It's a, uh, Annika's telling the story as a storyteller, but remembering back when she was 10 years old, uh, when she was, uh, you know, a child uh, from the perspective of an adult. And so uh, a lot of the design aspects have to do with, you know, memory is a tricky thing. And, you know, what do you specifically remember about somebody? Do you remember their gestures, you know, the tone of their voice, the, the you know, their attitude, their, their posture, you know, there's, there's things like that that uh that i think you remember more than uh uh you know skin tone and pores and noses and eyeballs uh that's that stuff is a gimme you 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 remember the essence so my my challenge with a lot of these characters is what is the absolute minimal essence i can present uh right to, to establish these characters um all funds for the November 11th event are going to Elephants and Suitcases LLC, which is the production company behind Annika's Elephants. Once again, that is at the uh, Carriage House in New York City. How can people register and how much does this cost to attend? Uh, they can go to Little Shadow Productions. Uh, I can hold up. This is the, uh, uh, can you see? Where do I go? Down here? There you go. Yep. Right? There you go. You got it. There it is. Yep, and right. You guys, you know, could uh, link that to. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep, uh, that's we'll, we'll, put, like, we'll put like a picture up. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the, the live demo is 125 and then the uh, full day is 550. Uh, again, all proceeds go to uh, our show and helping us get to the next steps. Absolutely. Awesome. So, and absolutely. I actually, yeah, I actually did a post about that on my bump on both linkedin and instagram so so there you go if anyone wants to check my post on that too so yes and yeah so thanks yeah we're, yes. we've got about uh i think seven slots left for the uh the full day um so grab them while you can uh and um uh, yeah, we, we 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 don't do this too often and no it's, no uh, this is this is probably it and it's you know <laughs> and it's it'll be me and pam arciero mm -hmm. and bradley freeman and Steph. uh stephanie de bruzzo okay. uh you, you know getting getting those four <laughs> together mm -hmm. in one room uh that that never happens yeah and i probably won't yeah so that's probably one one shot deal yeah you know so uh yeah, yeah. So if um, people would absolutely. like to connect with you both, uh, where can people find you? Uh, you can certainly find me uh, on Facebook or um, I have a website that's AnnieEvans.com. Uh, and that has a connect to, that will connect me to my, my email. Uh, I, I am not on Facebook and never will be. Every once in a while, Annie will tell me something on Facebook that I need to see and I roll my eyes. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> usually put it off. Uh, I, I too have a, uh, a website, uh, Martin P. Robinson Productions, uh, which I never go to. <laughs> but so, if, you, if you send an email though, it does come to your Gmail account, right? Uh, which I never check. You probably should. I probably should. There's probably an email or two there. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can get in touch with my agent. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That Other is, than that, well, I, certainly uh, you can, you can email I, me through my website and, uh, you know, and, uh, or you guys, you know, you guys can right. forward, uh, right. somebody contacts you and says, how do I get out of this workshop? Just send them my email. Right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I've, in recent years, I've, I've embraced my, uh, uh, my tendencies, tendencies towards being a hermit <laughs> a little bit more than maybe I should, but, uh, it's, uh, that's me. Yes. Yes, and uh, and uh, more information about the event and production, all that will be in the description down below, so people can check that out. Just, just click on the link and boom. If anyone yes. is watching, Thanks, can check it out. Yeah. Yes. Really it's a pleasure. Pleasure. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So the last Absolutely. question that uh, Jake's going to ask, we've asked both of you this previously. Um, go ahead, Jake. And we're going to ask it here again. <laughs> so, so of course, this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostal Show. When you think of nostalgia, what do you think of when in your own words, how would you both you know, define the word nostalgia? Well, uh, nostalgia for me often is smells. If I smell like a wet boardwalk, mm. 
uh, I'm immediately back to Bradley Beach, New Jersey, 1968, or, or uh, you know, uh, saltwater taffy, boom, back to a, mm -hmm. uh, a, uh, I mean, nostalgia is a two-edged sword. You could live in nostalgia and not, and then not be in your present, but, um, but it also is a wonderful thing to, to, to have, you know, for your memories. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think, you know, we, we, human beings seem to have a, a an incredible ability to uh, remember uh, the good stuff and not remember the bad stuff. Um, you know, it, it just, tends to be automatically expunged certainly in my thank mind thank god for our kids because they, they seem to forget oh <laughs> thank god. yeah uh, they only remember the good the good things we've done or 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 do they at least say they do uh <laughs> yes. so, yeah so i you know thinking back to you know my my early days uh you know i i remember you know so much of the wonderful stuff the friends mm -hmm. the the you know getting together you know this this time of year i always think of you know halloween with my buddies when i was when i was just a little kid and how much fun that was and uh, um really really bathing in the in the you know the glorious uh, uh uh you know bucolic memories of the past well one thing is also interesting a way to end it in terms of nostalgia is annika's elephants is a memory play mm. you know she's a storyteller and she's they're specifically bringing you back to when she was, you know, young and reliving this story for them. So it is actually a nostalgia yeah. story yeah. in that sense. You know, you know, she and she remembers a lot yeah. of the a lot of the wonderful stuff and yeah. the beautiful and stuff. stuff and the, but she, you know, but she remembers the the, uh, yeah. the pain and the sadness and the uh, and uh, and all that all that goes with it. Yeah, because she 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 plays herself, you know, uh, as an adult, but then she goes back and plays herself as an eight year old and a, and a twelve year old uh so it's you know very specific uh, and you see that and she, and she makes it such an incredible actress you really can tell when it's you know the time has lapsed and uh, and three and three years has gone by and she's no longer at eight she's now 12 uh and uh right. but she, she also steps in and out yeah. she'll she'll be she'll be she'll be eight she'll be 40 she'll be eight, eight she'll be 40. 40 yeah uh and she can switch just like that and you, and you know exactly where you yes, are she's that good <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> And, and the adult, the adult is looking back, and you know, and commenting and feeling mm -hmm. about what that moment was about what, that we just saw. Yeah, what mm -hmm. what her child did. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely, great words. And, um, oh, well yes. done. You chose the right show to uh, put on your podcast. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, well, Marty and yeah. Marty thank and you. Annie, thank you so much for uh, coming back and taking the time to do this. This was a blast. Yes, thank you. Thank it's you always, much. always I'm... a wonderful time getting to talk to you both. And I know Marty, yes. we recently saw you at Puppet Club. Yes, we did. That's yeah, right. that, we, was, we did. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, I'm, I'm trying that, to that was uh, fun. trying to get together with them again to do a uh, a technical thing. Uh, oh, to, right. yes. yes, that's right. Yes, Worth I remember Gretchen that. telling us about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 With Gretchen Van Lente that oh. I did. Oh, that's right. Yes. Delightful. Uh, yes. 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 Wonderful. Absolutely delightful. Yes. Wonderful. Well, keep in touch. I will let you both know when this goes up. It should go up very soon, so people have enough time to you know check out info about yeah, Annika's elephants and everything. Can, uh, you know, get get uh, get there or get someone to pay for you to go there. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. And well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up Anthony's uh, Anthony's uh, interview with you guys and and listen to that while I while I work on this elephant for the rest of the afternoon. Awesome. Oh, oh nice. thank, thank you. you. See you. Thank, thank you very again. Much. Yes, yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks again. Have a happy Halloween. I didn't leave. Bye. Yes. Good Bye. Guys. Good day. Take care. Bye. Bye. And there we go. That is uh, Annika's Elephants for you folks. Uh, once again, the uh, the monitor workshop is on November 11th at the Carriage House. Nope. Uh, thank you. Thank you to Post Production for the graphic there. It is at uh, 225 East 67th Street in New York. Uh, for more information, please check out uh, littleshadowproductions.com. They'll tell you more information about the show itself, as well as the monitor workshop. Uh, yes, again, thank you to Marty and Annie for coming back. It was wonderful. Yes, uh, and so again, so links to wonderful. the fundraiser and uh, Annex Elephants info about that will be in the description, as well as Marty and Annie's website, so you can... Yes check out more info about Annika's elephants and their other puppetry work as well. Um, keep on the lookout for uh, more wonderful interviews and YouTube exclusives coming your way. 
Yes. Um, as always, what do we say, Jake? Keep nostalgia alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Hey, everybody. Matt Bingle here, one of the co-hosts and editors. Thanks for joining us for this YouTube exclusive. Just one more quick note. Anarchus Elephants will be performing at the New Victory Theater in New York City, March 29th through April 7th, 2024, at the New Victory Theater in New York City. For those curious, that's located on West 42nd Street. For more information about this upcoming production, please visit newvictory.org. And once again, if you'd like to find out more information about Anarchus Elephants, please visit littleshadowproductions.com. Thanks for joining us and keep nostalgia alive. Thank you for watching this Jake's Happiness Star to show YouTube exclusive. Like and subscribe for more, and ring the bell that way you don't miss a single notification. We air brand new episodes twice a week, so don't miss it. Also be sure to follow Jake and the crew for more fun. Keep nostalgia alive, and thanks for joining us.